Hello there. I am Monologued, or Mono, or Josh, or any other variation of my name that you deem suitable at this moment. Um, and I stream over at twitch.tv slash monologued underscore. And on that channel, I've recently been discussing Dungeons and Dragons in quite some depth. I have quite a few people that have been asking questions about it in the chat, uh, new players who are interested in finding out how to actually get started. That's what I figured I would kind of help with now, see if I can give a brief introduction on how to get started with playing Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I plan on creating multiple shorter videos for this because I know that it can be quite overwhelming to get a lot of information all at once, so I will split it down into various parts that I will explain how they work and what they actually mean. For now I will just get a, give a very brief overview of a character sheet and what you need to get started to play D&D. So a bit about my experience with Dungeons and Dragons, um, I tried to start playing maybe six years ago in 2016. I remember gathering a couple of friends together, getting a little idea of a campaign and what I sort of wanted to do, and helping them create some characters. And the characters that we created were completely wrong. Uh, the idea of what we were playing was not on, uh, it was not D&D, we were playing our own game basically, and it was fun, it was really good fun, but it wasn't Dungeons and Dragons at all. Um, we continued this for a bit, and then we stopped. We tried again a couple of years later, a uh, similar idea, a bit more balanced this time, a little bit more like D&D, but again, we stopped. But it was in the summer of 2020, when uh, we were on lockdown, that we decided to start playing D&D online and we uh, started off with some homebrew which is like my own creation of a world uh, and we played a little bit with this and then we started our own campaign which is Curse of Strahd, a gothic horror campaign about vampires, werewolves, castles, the whole lot and we're still playing that to this day. And it was through watching videos and listening to podcasts of Dungeons and Dragons that I actually got into it. Uh, I watched some of the Adventure Zone and I thought, there are some things I like about this, some things I'd do a little differently. And it was that that made me actually kind of push myself to do it myself. I said I could do it differently, so why don't I do it differently? Um, from this I also started watching Critical Role. And Critical Role is a brilliant show for seeing professional voice actors uh, play Dungeons and Dragons as their characters, and they do it so wonderfully. They they voice act the characters, Matthew Mercer is a brilliant DM um, who does wonderful descriptions, and I, I genuinely, genuinely, thoroughly enjoy watching Critical Role. However, you don't have to be a brilliant voice actor to play Dungeons and Dragons. I'm, I'm a science student, I do not have skills in in dramatics but i i can put on some voices occasionally to to show off to my characters it's it's fun it's all about your own enjoyment of it and if your enjoyment is doing silly voices for characters then do it but you don't have to you could say something like this character says in this accent and then say it in your own accent dnd &D is accessible to whoever needs it it's not something that is limited only to those that can act or roleplay. You learn it by playing D&D. It's completely easy to access. And even more so, it's made it even easier to access by the things that you need to actually get started with D&D. In Dungeons & Dragons, you have a Dungeon Master, or a DM. The DM is a person who leads the session. They kind of help the players work through the story. They do all the planning behind the scenes for who, in terms of uh, NPCs, non-player characters, they create all the world, and it's your players that play in that world. You also need the players. These will be people, actual people, who will play the characters in the world. They will be involved in the combat, they will be involved in the communication, they will be involved in all these different parts of D&D. And this can be done at a table, this can be done online, uh, I've only ever played online, and we do it across Discord, and it works quite well. 
but people also play at the table with the DM behind a DM screen, and then the people sitting around the table playing. It shows the different ways that you can play Dungeons & Dragons. It doesn't have to be in person, it can be online. Dungeons & Dragons in itself is a tabletop role-playing game. You role-play as your characters to play a story. It is not like Skyrim or something, which is where you will play through a set story and it will not change. This is how the story will go. Your, your actions matter, but to a degree. Dungeons & Dragons, it is boundless. It is only kind of kept in check by your dungeon master and your players. If you decide that you don't want to do that main quest, you can not do it. Your DM might guide you back to it in some way and you might end up doing it, but it's your choices that matter. There is no limit to the creativity that you can have in Dungeons & Dragons, apart from the limit placed by you and your players. It is as simple as that. Um, and that's what I like about it. It is really for you to decide what you do with it. And what do you need to get started with Dungeons & Dragons? Well, as I said, you need a DM, you need a Dungeon Master, whether that's yourself or a friend. Um, I am a Dungeon Master, I DM for my friends, and currently there is me and five players. We've had more in the past, and we've had less in the past as well. We've had fewer players that play with us. And you can play with just one DM and one player. That is possible and I'm sure it'd be quite fun to be honest, but I think for a new DM, it helps to DM for a couple of people so you can kind of get a feel for everyone at the same time. And as a player, it could be quite daunting playing in a smaller group. It can be daunting in a bigger group too. So I think four or five is a pretty reasonable number, but three is not bad as well for a starting DM and starting players. Um, Genuinely, having any number of people willing to play Dungeons & Dragons is a good time, and it can be quite difficult to arrange people to play at the same time, so take what you can get in terms of that. So you need you, you need friends, and you need a little bit of an imagination, because whilst you can use um, lovely pre-made maps, you can use battle maps that are in-person, physical, you can st stack your miniatures on top of these battle maps and it can look beautiful, like in Critical Role or something like that. Or if you don't play in person, or you can't afford those battle maps, you can use Microsoft Paint to paint a little map, or um, you can draw it on paper and take a photo of it and upload it to Discord or something else. Or you could use some fancy online tabletop software such as Dungeon Draft and then use Foundry or Roll20 to upload your maps. That's a lot of information there, don't worry about it too much. I will do a specific video on the different kind of tools available for those elements of Dungeons & Dragons. What matters is that you don't need them. You can play just using Microsoft Paint. You can play with just a bit of paper. If you don't have that, you can scratch it in some dirt. It does not matter. You've got everything you need right now to start playing Dungeons & Dragons. Another thing that could be useful is a character sheet. Now, you've got your Dungeon Master, you've got your other players, and your Dungeon Master is working on creating a world, which hopefully I will also go into some more detail on that at a much later point, because that is a lot to work on. But there are different campaigns that are pre-made and available to run through. But you need to create a character. You've got an idea of what you want, but you don't have anything written down. And there are specific things in Dungeons & Dragons, especially 5th edition, which is the most recent edition at this time of Dungeons & Dragons, that actually dictate how you should create a character. And I'll do a brief overview of the character sheet now, and then go into more detail with it in future videos. So here we have a character sheet, provided by Wizards of the Coast, the company that makes Dungeons & Dragons. So this is the typical character sheet that you will see when looking at any example character sheets, but this is not the only one that you can use. For example, this reddit link here has dyslexic friendly character sheets, such as this one here, which makes it a little bit more manageable for people with dyslexia to hopefully get into Dungeons and & Dragons and arrange their character sheets. 
I'm sure there are many, many more that you can find online that are similar to this or are suitable for different types of people. In addition to this, there is D&D Beyond. Now, D&D Beyond is an online D&D character creation tool and you can use it to kind of work through the different steps needed to create a character. I will uh, include an example here of a, a character sheet um, that I've made or my party has made using D&D Beyond and it is quite effective. Um, we use it because it is really quick and easy and it has everything that you need in one space and it can really help new players find everything they need when they need it. So here is a very brief overview of a character sheet on D&D Beyond. You can see everything laid out similar to the character sheet that we have over here. And we've got the scores here, skills here, and it splits it in the different areas here. Like I say, I will go into more detail on all of this, but this is the kind of idea from D&D Beyond. But this has everything that you need on it, and it is related to all of these different character sheets as well. Everything is the same, it's just in a different format. Now, in my next video, I will go into more detail on creating a character, but a character sheet will show you everything that there is to creating a character. And I will describe each bit in very little detail right here. So at the top here, you've got some details about you and your character. Your character's name, what class they are, such as a rogue or a bard, their background, what were they before they were an adventurer. Their origin or race, what are they? Are they an elf? Are they a dwarf? Their alignment, are they good? Are they evil? Are they chaotic or are they lawful? And then your name and experience points. Experience points and level are related and I will tell you a lot more about that in the creation of the character video. So that is a little bit about your character which can also be backed up by the personality traits, ideals, bonds and flaws. This tells uh, the DM and also anyone who reads the character sheet about what it is that your character is striving for. Who are they friends with? What What is their fatal flaw? What what could catch them out? And things like that. And this can also help you as a player roleplay your character. Over here, we've got your ability scores. So we've got strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, and then all of these skills associated with them. Now, this will require a lot more of an explanation. However, these skills here and the ability scores determine how easily or how difficult it is for your character to do something. How easily can they lift up a bit of rubble that is trapping someone underneath it? How easily can they nimbly dash across a tightrope to get some treasure on the other side? How hard is it for them to investigate a room and find out the clues that lead to the secret doorway? How likely are they to notice that blood stain underneath the rug that's been hidden? And that is all of these ability scores and skills. Saving throws are a little bit more complicated. They come in with combat and they are based on how likely it is for your character to survive a certain situation. Then we've got this middle section. This is a little bit about your character and how hard they are to hit and how hard they are to kill. You've got their armor class, which is how hard they are to hit. Their hit points, which is their health. And then you've got initiative, how quickly they act in combat. Speed, how quickly they move. Hit dice are related to resting, which I will do a lot more detail on. And death saves are when they are in on death's door. Are they going to survive or are they going to die? And I will do more detail on that too. Your equipment is down here with different characters, you get different equipment and you will find more as you play the game. Here is how you measure your gold, you've got copper pieces, silver pieces, electrum, gold and platinum pieces. Proficiencies and languages are based on how skilled your character is in completing different things, so it can be Proficiencies in playing instruments, for example, the lute you could be proficient in, and also speaking different languages. And these benefit from a role-playing standpoint, as well as a combat standpoint if you're proficient in weapons. 
Attacks are related to your equipment if you have weapons, or spells if you're a spellcaster. A lot of this will be explained much later. Features and traits. Different types of characters, based on class and origin, can have different features and traits. Um, they will vary from rogue to barbarian, from elf to dwarf, and so on and so forth. And they will change how you play the game, both roleplay and combat. And that is what will fit into there. So that is the first page of the character sheet in just a very quick rundown. In future videos, I will explain all of this in a lot of detail to hopefully break it down for you a lot better. But to start with, we will look at creating characters from the ground up, picking a new character and deciding what to do with them. And I will go over that in my next video. So that is a short introduction to getting started with D&D, a bit about my experience with D&D, and how you can get into D&D easily. Um, I know that there is so much I haven't covered in this video, but if you look at how long it already is, I really need to split this up. Um, I will put links to everything that I included in the description below, and I will have another video up hopefully soon on character creation, actually starting and creating a character and the decisions you need to make beforehand. Um, ideally, I would love to hear from anyone who watches this. Tell me what it is that you have in terms of questions about D&D, getting into D&D, um, anything like that, and I will definitely get around to answering them in other videos, because it is ultimately for new players and also returning players who just want to recap, and it's so useful to have feedback from people who need this information. So um, hopefully I will see you again soon in the character creation video. Thank you very much.